The last time TCU came to Southern California, they went back to Fort Worth with a Rose Bowl championship. The San Diego State Aztecs and their first-year head coach, Rocky Long, are trying to become the new top dogs in the Mountain West Conference. TCU and San Diego State is presented to you by Discover Card. Beautiful Southern California, San Diego to be exact, and the Aztecs host the Horn Frogs who come in at three and two, and it's all brought to you in HD by the folks at LG. Well, three and two, quite a change from 13 and 0 when they were in Southern California last. And of course, that was the third BCS Bowl win for the Mountain West Conference since 2004. Things are changing. The Big 12, perhaps, we'll get to that. But first, let's get to the matter at hand on the field. Casey Paul Hall filling in for Andy Dalton this year. Yeah, talk about having big shoes to fill, but luckily for TCU, Paul Hall hasn't disappointed. He's already on schedule to break the single season record at TCU for both completion percentage and touchdown thrones. He has not had a very bad game to start this far. TCU's averaging almost 42 points per game. Well, record pace for another sophomore for San Diego State, Ronnie Hillman has been very special. Another great sophomore, 10 straight, or excuse me, six straight 100-yard runs rushing games and 10 for his young career already. He has great vision, he's patient in the hole, and then uses tremendous bursts to be able to get up to the second level. TCU is gonna have to tackle this young man legs tonight because he's very hard to bring down up high. San Diego State won the toss and will receive. So kicking off for TCU, Ross Evans in our opening kickoff tonight, brought to you by Bud Light, Aaron Taylor, Lombardi Award winner at Notre Dame, of course, NFL Super Bowl champion, played in the Super Bowl here. You know all about Southern California, played for the Chargers for a couple years. You ready to go, AT? Yes, I am, baby. All right, Anita, here we go for our folks at Bud Light as soon as Ross Evans decides to kick it away to Colin Lockett and Brandon Davis. Give it to me. Yeah. It is Lockett in and out of his hands. And a good job by the cover team for TCU. With more on that Big 12 talk, here's Brooke Collins. Well, TCU's Big 12 invitation, of course, was huge news in the sports world this week. Coach Gary Patterson remained pretty mum on the subject, although he did admit these are exciting, exciting times for TCU. He said someone once told him, you want to be able to say no more than you say yes, and TCU is finally in that position. TCU's plan was, of course, to head to the Big East. We won't know if that plan stays intact or they accept the invite from the Big 12 until next week. Word is the school's Board of Trustees will meet Monday to decide, James. Well, thank you, Brooke. And there's this sophomore, Ronnie Hillman, first play from scrimmage. Nothing there for him, but to Karen Cuba, the safety. And already a senior. Seems like yesterday he was a freshman, but nothing has changed as far as the leadership goes. There's your quarterback profile for Lindley. Yeah, Ryan Lindley's a tremendous quarterback, making much better decisions this year than he ever has in his career here. You have to remember, this young man has had three different offensive coordinators in five years. It's nice to be able to have some consistency and it's really starting to show. Wow. It's the first Quick time, time out of the first half for San Diego. For the Aztecs, not the way they wanted to start. We'll take one with them. Be right back at the Qualcomm. College football on CBS Sports Network is brought to you by Discover Card. It pays to discover. By Buick. See real stories of human achievement on the Buick Human Highlight Reel at NCAA.com slash Buick. And by LG. Life's good. 
And we're back, America's finest city. And we should have one fine matchup in college football for you tonight here on CBS Sports Network. It was one play and a quick timeout for Ryan Lindley and these Aztecs. So a second down and nine. This is second play of the night. Hillman's going to try to get outside, and that's tough to do against these guys wearing the white jerseys. Jason Verrett, who was questionable to play tonight on the tackle. Time now for our Buick starting lineups. Let's start with the Aztecs here. Well, up front, San Diego State is bringing back a very experienced offensive line. But keep your eye on Curtis Gunther, the right tackle. He'll have his hands full tonight with Stansley Maponga. A lot of skill positions we talked about for San Diego State. But Colin Lockett, the young sophomore, is a converted defensive back. He's given the access to uh, pretty deep threat so far this year. Three wide receivers up top for Lindley. A third down and ten. Four-man rush and pressure from TCU almost picked off, tried to get rid of it. Yendry on the pressure, and Verrett almost got his hands on it. Would have been an easy six. James, that almost looked like a breakdown of protection up front. Keep your eye on Ryan Lindley. Knows he got away with one on that, but instant pressure, just a four-man rush, and there seemed to be some miscommunication. That's a very seasoned offensive line for San Diego State with an early mental error. So no yards and a three and out for the TCUD off the side of the foot of the senior Stahovich. And trouble. Looked like maybe Elisha Olabode touched it. It will be TCU ball, however. And here's another look at the back end of it. Woo, very close. Had to go matrix on that. Ooh, might have looked like it changed. It's angle there. Look at Coach Gary Patterson. He's he's on the freshman. Brandon Carter back there to return. Sky Dawson, who returns a lot of punts. Had some trouble last week in the loss to SMU. So play action for Paul Hall first time out. And he does connect with Sky Dawson. Sky Dawson, a great receiver for this TCU team. He's very, very fast. He's had some drops as of late, but coach is giving him confidence going after him on the first play. Don't make any mistake about this, James. TCU is a run-based offense, and it's imperative that they establish the run early in this ballgame. Well, they've got their bigs in there right now. Luke Shivers, the senior fullback. Fuller and Brock blocking in there as well. Two tight ends, and up near the sticks may be enough for a first down. And there's Andy Dalton's replacement. 42 and 7. Dalton as a starting quarterback for TCU. And now it's the Casey Paw Hall show, the sophomore. Extremely accurate quarterback, almost completing 70% of his balls, but also a very good decision maker. And he's had two comebacks this year in the fourth quarter. So he's got some moxie and some leadership ability to him. Comebacks that fell short, however, and really rallying a young team. And there's Wesley, Ed Wesley. Missed three games earlier this year and making the San Diego State defense pay for it. Bear Hay finally gets him, but he's into Aztec territory after the 24-yard gainer. And that's what Ed Wesley brings to this offense. San Diego State has struggled against the run this year, and you can see why on this play, a lot of missed tackles for that 3-3-5 defense from Rocky Long that likes to be able to create a lot of pressure and a lot of mismatches in terms of their alignment. But TCU, we talked about them starting to take control up front early in this game. Empty set. And a, what looked to be a handoff sweep, but a keeper by Paul Hall. And he's rocked by Harris, the sophomore from right up the road in Los Angeles. Talking with the TCU coaches, they said that Casey Paul Hall was actually faster than Andy Dalton. But they wanted to see a little bit better job running the football at him. He bobbled the ball there on the exchange when he decided to pull it. And that unquestionably threw his timing off a little bit and allowed Harris to make a big stick. Getting TCU's offense off schedule, bringing up second and long. Horn Frog folks also want to see how he reacts after hard shots like that. This time he'll hand off. And lunging forward, Matthew Tucker. Time now for our Buick starting lineups for TCU. Well, keep your eye on the left guard, Kyle Dooley. He's a former walk-on and a four-year starter, the leader of a very physical group. 
This TCU offensive line has it had to replace a lot of faces, but they got some skill and talent behind them, particularly sophomore Josh Boyce, who's the leading wide receiver, averaging almost 15 and a half yards per catch. Coaches say he's the smartest player they've got. Bunch set at the bottom of your screen. Diamond formation for the Frogs down low. Paha with time, finds his tight end, in and out of the hands of Logan Brock. Good break on the ball, and it's broken up by Daywan Hemmings, the senior safety. Logan Brock is a big body, six foot three, and brother of Tanner Brock. But that time, Daywan Hemmings does a good job of being able to come over and separating the ball. Brock was open, he got his hands on it. Ball sort a little bit high. You've got to be able to bring that ball down. But a good job by Hemmings getting that right hand, forcing the field goal. So here's the four-year starter, Ross Evans, a 47-yard try. Put down by Kelton. It's up, and it is good. So TCU strikes first. Here in San Diego, it's 3 to nothing. Horn Frogs. Tonight's game presented to you by Discover Card. Back here at the Q, Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego and Gary Patterson's TCU Horn Frogs with a 47-yard field goal by Ross Evans strike first. And Rocky Long, the new head coach here at San Diego State, was a defensive coordinator on Brady Hoke's staff. And Brady Hoke, of course, off to Michigan. Where the Wolverines are undefeated up in Ann Arbor. Aztecs traveling to Ann Arbor two weeks ago, and that's their only loss of the season. Second try at it for the Aztecs. Here's Colin Rocket. And a flag comes down as the speedster takes it up to the 33. Antonio Graves on the special teams tackle for Patterson squad. The last drive for TCU was very important. One of the things that they've struggled with offensively is getting off to fast starts. They averaged eight yards per Good carry. Return. Illegal block in the back. Number 42 of the receiving team. Penalty will be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. That's the starting linebacker, Aaron Jake Feely. Watch for 42. Keep an eye on the right side of your screen, right there. Got to be able to see the, the front numbers, don't you? That that is very costly. An offense on the opening series that went zero yards, a three and out. So backing it up after the nice return. And Hillman had a step on Mapunga, but can't hold on to it. Defensively for TCU and the Horn Frogs, who led the nation in defense three years in a row prior to this year. Well, very active, but inexperienced front up front with Stansley Bapanga, the guy that was just in one-on-one -on -one coverage back there with Hillman, is a pretty good one. And next in line, the two linebackers, Carter and Gardner, Tank Carter, battling injuries a little bit, but had a tremendous game in the Rose Bowl in that back five of that 4-2-5. Jason Barrett got torched in Baylor, but Coach say has been playing really well since then. Here's Hillman on the ground. First one there was Barrett. He's been active early the sophomore a juco transfer from santa rosa it's junior college who had nine tackles against the smu mustangs last week and the overtime loss to june jones squad and a pickup of five so a third down and five now for san diego state Red's a fun player to watch. He's got tremendous speed, and it says a lot about a young player that on national TV can struggle in his first start, but really respond and play solid week in and week out. He's a very physical cornerback. Four down lineman for TCU. Maponga off the edge on the bottom. Lindley lets it go in and out of the hands. First of the receiver, Denso, and Devin Johnson almost picked it off. And dodging a little bit of a bullet there, San Diego State, another three and out for the Horn Frogs. Well, this isn't the way that San Diego State wanted to start their two opening drives going three and out. Dylan Denso with the second of two drops on that drive. Of course, Ronnie Hillman had the first one, but TCU's defense so far stepping up and the Aztecs struggling. Block is on, but they can't get the Stahovich. Here's Sky Dawson. No fair catch called, and he's popped right in the face mask. Don't see a flag hustling down was Eric Pinkins, and there is a flag, but it's backed by the punter. 
My goodness. Dawson did not call for the fair catch. Antonio Graves may have gotten a piece of Stahovich. Five-yard penalty makes the line again. It'll be a first down. Yeah, you see. Right there, number 19, Antonio Graves. Stahovich's leg comes down on him. When you're attacking the punt, you're taught to jump for a spot in front of the punter's foot so that if you miss, you don't come into contact with him. Here it is, full speed, Dawson. And a good job timing it up. If there ever was a defenseless player, it's right there looking high into the San Diego sky. But no flag at that end. And a second chance on this second drive now for San Diego State. Fresh set of downs after the penalty. Play action pass. Lindley going up top for Escobar. And again, in and out of a receiver's hands. This time it's the sophomore tight end. Gavin Escobar did a great job running a corner route on that one. A mismatch out on the outside. We talked about Ryan Lindley's accuracy this year. Barely completing over 50% of his balls. And you see the white one was a little bit overthrown. Just really seems like San Diego State is a little off kilter early in this ballgame. They need to settle down, establish the run, and start to get something going offensively. You see Ronnie Hillman coming down here to the outside, lined up as a wide receiver. Second and ten, he goes the way of Hillman. And a good job breaking a couple tackles. Running him in the sophomore has the first first down of the night for San Diego State. 14 yards on the pickup. Well, James, yesterday when we were talking to offensive coordinator Andy Ludwig, he said one of the things that they worked on in their bye week was trying to be able to get some more speed on the outside, particularly with Ronnie Hillman and Walter Casey. They felt that they'd be, be able to create some mismatch and create some problems for. TCU's pass defense, which at times has admittedly struggled this year. A missed tackle for Tank Carter. You didn't see much of that last year, but he's had some sloppy tackling this year. That time a bad angle as he dives at the feet of Ronnie Hillman. Verrett finally gets him. Brooke Collins, back down to you. Well, you were mentioning him a few times earlier. Stansley Mapunga. Now, you wouldn't know it by his outstanding play. But didn't even know what a football was until he moved to Texas from Zimbabwe at the age of eight. He grew up playing rugby and soccer, of course, in Africa. It wasn't until middle school in Carrollton, Texas, that Mapunga was introduced to the sport, and the rest is history. Another interesting fact about Stansley, his native language is Shona, which not many have heard of. I hear it's very different from the Texas drawl, James. <laughs> and coming up in the second half, Brooke will actually sing the national anthem in Shoshona. <laughs> you don't want to hear that. <laughs> Thank you, Brooke. Yeah, he's been fun to watch on tape so far this year. Maponga is really one of those guys that stands out along that defensive front for TCU with a great motor going sideline to sideline. Yeah, there's no question. I was really impressed with his vast array of pass rush moves. He's a stabber. He's a ripper. He's a spinner inside. He's an arm chopper for being such a young guy. He's got a pretty good repertoire in the pass rush department. Under center now, Lindley, a third down. And they need four. Good protection up front. He threads the needle. First down. Dylan Denso, the sophomore, with the catch and Greg McCoy on the coverage. This is what you need if you're San Diego State's offense. You have to be able to give Lindley good time and protection. That time they do up front. Great job by Greg McCoy coming over to hit Denso, but Denso does a great job. He's more of a possession type receiver, not somebody that's going to stretch the field, but he'll come up with a big catch when you need it. Fullback is Chad Young. Eye backs behind the sophomore Ryan Lindley, who will change the play at the line. And it's a handoff, this time to Casey. Walter Casey, the junior, up close to the first down sticks. It'll be second down and short. Well, this is what San Diego State does. They pull the backside guard, Rivera, just on a simple power play, trying to bust it up inside. Good job of that right side of the offensive line crashing down to get the angle blocks to allow Hillman to get north and south and show you that burst and strength that he has for such a young back. Aaron, another missed tackle for the defensive MVP of last year's Rose Bowl. Tank Carter had surgery on his finger. And he has been off kilter a little bit here as of late when it comes to tackling. 
And a draw play to Ronnie Hillman running behind the big fullback, Chad Young, and he will move the chains again. Third first down on this drive, and fourth if you go back to that penalty that kept it alive. Well, this is what's so good about being able to have such a big play on first down. Really, your offense is wide open, and it gives you a lot of options to be able to call certain type of plays. That's called being on schedule, and so far in this third drive for the Aztecs, they've been able to be on schedule because of the running in the legs of Ronnie Hillman and those big boys up front. 11th play of the drive, already gone 50 yards. Here's more positive yardage, and a good pickup on first down, a six-yard pickup for Ronnie Hillman. Roddy Hillman again doing a good job of being able to get yards on first down that puts a lot of pressure on the defense whether it's play action passes whether it's run you're limited in what it is you can call defensively and you're wide open in terms of play calling on offense Aaron we've got two head coaches with definite defensive minds and Gary Patterson has to be fuming over there after he had his second third and out was Change with the penalty. Here's Chad Young, his first carry of the year. The fullback dive, and the sophomore finally gets a shot. He had been promised week after week by Andy Ludwig, and he said, I felt terrible. I can't get it to him. <laughs> he said he's such a tough physical runner to be able to bust it up inside. This is just a simple fullback dive. Great job of being patient in the hole himself for Chad Young, maybe taking a little page out of Ronnie Hillman's book. That's maybe, his first carry on the year, buddy. Maybe taking a little page out of touchdown Tommy Vardell's book. Keep an eye on Tank Carter. He's wearing that brace on his right leg. I agree with you, James. He doesn't seem to be himself tonight. Drop back and thrown too hard and behind the intended target. It was Hillman coming out of the backfield. So a second down and 10 now. A first down can be picked up by San Diego State at the one-yard line. Well, here, James, is another example of Andy Lugwood and that offensive staff trying to create some mismatches. That time, Hillman was locked up one-on-one -on, -one on the middle linebacker, Chris Gardner, number 33, and did a good job of being able to get inside, but the ball just wasn't thrown accurately. Tonight's red zone being brought to you by Verizon. Three wides. In motion is the speedster Lockett. Dancing. And usually the patience pays off for the nation's second leading rusher, the sophomore Ronnie Hillman. That time there's a whole bunch of horn frogs waiting on him. A two-yard pickup leading the charge with Stansley Maponga. I'll tell you what, when you talk about red zone for this San Diego State team, they do a pretty good job. 79% of the time they get inside the 20, they've scored touchdowns. When you flip that and you look at TCU, they haven't been so good. The good news is, is they've given up 100% of scores when teams have crossed, but they've only given up five touchdowns. So it'll be interesting to see who wins this matchup with San Diego State on the 15. Alston Umuolo in the game. He's a slot up top. And again, thrown behind Denzo and good break by Devin D.J. Johnson. And so standing in the red zone, TCU. I tell you what, James, it's lucky that that ball was thrown behind him because had it been thrown a little bit higher, I think Johnson might have been able to pick that one. Again, Ryan Lindley's made better decisions this year. He might have gotten away with that one. Here's a 32-yard try. Trying to match it in trouble as the snap is bobbled and thrown right up into the air and caught by San Diego State, but it will be shy of the first down marker. So it's special teams that helps keep the drive alive and special teams by Gary Patterson's bunch. That stands down low, so we'll stay right there at three to nothing. Emilio Rivera, the left guard that came down with that. San Diego State. Can't finish the drive. TCU's up next. And we're back. There you see the ball two yards shy of the needed yardage for a first down. Here's the replay and maybe a, an ineligible receiver downfield. Stahovic. Yeah. Stahovic is rolling out to his right and just throws up a prayer hoping something can happen. Number 87, Bryce Quigley, the tight end, touches it first. 
Emilio Rivera comes down On with it. On the previous play, we had a foul for illegally touching the ball, number 53 of the offense. He was the first to touch the ball before any member of the defensive team did. The foul will be declined. The result of the play will be a first down. Okay, well, thank you. There's our head official, Rick Lumiere from New Orleans, Louisiana. The French Cajun explaining it for us. I, I'll tell you what, James, it sure did look to me like number 87, Bryce Quigley, the tight end, got a hand on it first. So back to the ground, and why not? It worked on that opening drive for the Horn Frogs, but stuffed this time. Miles Burris was in there first on Ed Wesley. Miles Burris, the unquestioned leader of this defense. He's an explosive player. Led the Mountain West Conference last year in sacks with nine and a half. They'd like to be able to bring him off the edge. He's a fast player, runs sideline to sideline, and been very consistent here for the Aztecs. That's his second tackle for loss tonight. He led the Mountain West with 20 tackles for loss last year to the air. And it's Antoine Hicks, the senior from Arlington, Texas, who had a huge sophomore year. 10 touchdowns on just 32 touches, and then a bit of a down year with some injuries last year in the 13-0 run for TCU. Yeah, Antoine Hicks is the third leading receiver versus their spread look with four wide receivers. He plays on the inside. And when they're in their heavier personnel, their 12 personnel, he likes to be able to play on the outside. TCU with a lot of youth, more so than Gary Patterson's maybe ever experienced in Fort Worth. But a lot of good talent on this team. Wayman James in for Wesley, and it's Shivers, the fullback, next to Paul Hall. Time for Paul Hall. This time hanging on to it is Logan Brock. First down. And more up near the 35-yard line, the senior from Copperas Cove, Texas. Logan Brock is such a big body in there, does a good job of being able to sit in the zone behind the linebackers, but in front of the safety, wide open, and then is able to be able to turn his shoulders upfield. Paul Hall putting the ball right on the money where he can catch it and turn and immediately get north and south. Good protection up front. The guys up front will block this time for Matthew Tucker, and he'll gain two. Aaron, there aren't, there aren't the big names up front, the, the Marcus Cannons, the Jake Kirkpatricks, they're gone, but, but it's, a, it's, it's a little bit of a, a piecemeal uh, crew up front. They've, they've switched in a lot of bodies and some trouble there on the right side of the line against SMU that they got shored up a little bit, but late in the game. Yeah, there's quite a big difference in the body weight and the sizes. TCU going almost 300 pounds in San Diego State, quite a bit smaller. Two different styles of philosophies. A lot of new faces on that offensive line, but the expectations are the same. Fade route to Boyce. Josh Boyce did a great job defensively. Leon McFadden's textbook. Leon McFadden's such a good cover guy. And a lot of teams this year have been throwing away from him, scared to try and get it to number two, but does a good job not necessarily getting his hands on the ball, but running step for step from Josh Boyce, a very good receiver. San Diego State will do that. They'd like to play man-to-man -man coverage on the outside and have a lot of confidence in Leon McFadden and Larry Parker, and you could see why on that last one. Great job of ripping through those wrists by the cornerback. What do they have now on third down and long? Good protection again up front. First down across midfield goes Antoine Hicks, his second catch of the night. Good job by Antoine Hicks coming in from that number two wide receiver position inside with a clear out, leaving it wide open, doing a good job being able to move those balls down the field. That's what TCU does. When they get on rhythm, they keep defenses kind of off kilter. They can hit you with the run, but also be able to stretch the field, and the Horn Frogs seem to be in rhythm. Here's Tucker for a few, runs right into the defensive tackle, Jerome Long. Only 63 days to go in the countdown to America's game, the Army-Navy game presented by USAA on CBS Sports. What a special game. There was a one for the ages between Navy and Air Force last weekend in Annapolis and an overtime victory for Troy Calhoun's squad. And a leg up on the competition for the Commander-in-Chief's trophy to stay there in Colorado Springs. 
Here's Ed Wesley. And not much there for him. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Jerome Long again, the senior from Las Osas, California. Well, Jerome Long's a player that we talked about that needs to be able to have a good game tonight. San Diego State runs a 3-3-5 defense, meaning three defensive linemen, three linebackers, and five defensive back. It's a defense built on speed and quickness, but you need somebody that can be able to hold the point. And right there in the middle, number 94, Jerome Long's doing a good job so far tonight. The blitz on that time. Antoine Hicks and a bullet thrown by Paho. Touchdown, TCU. That's the vertical strike ability that TCU wanted to be able to do. That time, number 26, Marcus Andrews was on the coverage. Splits time with Gabe Lemon. Got his first start tonight. Was a little soft in his coverage there. And gave up the touchdown. Extra point is good, and big Antoine Hicks, the senior from Arlington, Texas, right down the middle of the field, the sophomore gunslinger, finds his target, and it's 10 to nothing. Discover card bringing you the game tonight. Just last night, Aaron Gary Patterson told us that this guy, number 13, was key to this game and the season. And Antoine Hicks has not disappointed. Doing a good job. This is Sky Dawson who runs a slant. He actually clears out some space for Hicks to be able to come in. The safety is late getting over. And Marcus Andrews got beat off the snap. And unfortunately, Hemmings was too late getting over there. And Antoine Hicks running a good route for the touchdown. Here's Colin Lockett. The sophomore Lockett runs into the pile. It'll be the 25-yard line for Ryan Lindley in the Aztecs. Try number three, still scoreless for the Aztecs here in San Diego. Back here in San Diego where it's football first on CBS Sports Network and first season as the head coach here anyway for the San Diego State Aztecs, Rocky Long, the defensive mastermind of that 3-3-5 defense we saw so many years in Albuquerque. Guys like Brian Erlacher playing that Lobo position, and it's a team that's 10-2. and two. Rocky Long, when he's the head coach, his teams take advantage of a bye week, and they're coming off a bye right now and need to take advantage. And drive down and score. Big drive here for Lindley and the Aztecs, and Denzel holds on to it that time. The sophomore had a drop earlier. And 13 seconds now remaining in the first quarter as the chains will move. San Diego State wanted to be able to throw the ball on first down to be able to try and keep San Diego State guessing, maybe try and hit some shots downfield. Then so quickly establishing himself as Ryan Lindley's favorite target early in this ballgame. And as they reset the chains, the clock will run out. The first quarter of play, TCU putting 10 points on the board, a misstab at a field goal for San Diego State. You're watching primetime football presented by Discover Card exclusively on CBS Sports Network. Football first. We'll be right back. Back here in San Diego, America's finest city, 10 to nothing the lead for the visiting Horned Frogs from Fort Worth, Texas. The number 20 team in the nation last week and then lost to TC, uh, SMU, rather. Here's Ronnie Hillman, and he finally gets the edge against these speedsters from TCU. Greg McCoy giving chase, but it will be a first down and a whole lot more. Something that San Diego State's offense likes to do is create motion and be able to smoke defenses out, but then capture the edge. TCU's defense, talking with Gary Patterson, knew that they had to be able to play with leverage and be able to contain Ronnie Hillman. That's the first time that San Diego State's been able to get out towards the edge, but it certainly won't be the last. Hillman has enough speed to be able to get outside and enough power to run inside between the tackles. So first and 10 from the 41 at TCU. Now Stansley Mapunga right in the face of the senior Ryan Lindley. 
That was just going to be a simple screen pass. And as an offensive lineman, you're taught that you have to be able to block your guy for a counter to that time. Stansley Maponga showed up too quickly and it disrupted the timing. Screen game is about timing and spatial relationships, and Maponga was able to disrupt that last play because he wasn't blocked. And a good job there by Maponga pulling up a little bit, making sure he didn't get the flag. We saw from Greg McCoy earlier as well, similar situation. Second down and 10 now. I back and another draw to Hillman. Here's the sophomore, Ronnie Hillman, second in the nation coming into this weekend in rushing yards, only behind Oregon's LaMichael James. Chris Gardner, who gets his first start tonight on the stop. Well, James, we talked about Ronnie Hillman's patience and vision. Keep your eye on him. He gets all the way up into the line of scrimmage and then shows good lateral bursts on the draw, being patient, letting his blocks get set up. You want to know why this young man is second in the nation in rushing? It's that right there. He's a patient runner with tremendous bursts and good vision. And good job up front by the San Diego State offensive line and tight ends of getting and maintaining their blocks. The freshman All-American putting on almost 15 pounds in the offseason, as you see from the swiftness there. This is the second time out of the first half for San Diego State. Hillman hasn't skipped a beat. Looking for the first points of the night, though, when we come back to Qualcomm after this. Yeah. 13.45 left to play here in the first half. TCU and San Diego State. Last time these two will get together in the Mountain West Conference and you know the sophomore big numbers indeed when you put them up next to Falk even. Yeah there's no question that a lot of people think that Ronnie Hillman's going to be the next great back for San Diego State and he certainly made his impact felt in just his second year. And the senior connecting with Colin Lockett. Colin Lockett diving forward inside the two yard line. Won't get the end zone but a 34 yard knocking at the door. James, that's exactly what this San Diego State team needed is somebody to be able to step up and make a play. Colin Lockett right here and inside in the number two position with Dylan Denso in motion does a good job of just a simple out route and a missed tackle that time by Takaran Cuba put San Diego State inside the five yard line knocking on the end zone's door. They'll put it at the three. Eye backs now behind Lindley. Two tight ends are Escobar and Quigley. There's Hillman, changes direction, ball on the ground. And a touchback, Elijah Olabode comes up with it for TCU. Recovering the end zone touchback, first down. And it goes Aaron from just what San Diego State needed to absolutely the worst case scenario is Ronnie Hillman who does not fumble lays it in the end zone. Well going into that Michigan game he had 358 carries without a fumble. Good job of using his vision but he only has one arm on it and who's there. None other than number 43 Tank Carter who seems to make a living with coming up with big plays in the red zone around the goal line. The previous play of a fumble with a touchback is under further review. And of course they'll send one that big upstairs to Rodney Doddle, the replay official. And you talk about the Michigan game where Hillman did fumble, but prior to that, the last time he fumbled was in the very first game of his career as an Aztec last year as a freshman. Here it is again. That ball is out. The ball had not crossed the plane. It was a couple yards short. That ball's out, James. Take a look at it from another angle. Tank Carter, who said wasn't looking like himself, looked very much like himself on this play. Good job taking him up high. Coach Patterson talked about tackling Ronnie Hillman by his legs to Karen Cuba's there, but Tank Carter. It was actually Cuba number one who got beat by Lockett on the play prior to that whose helmet was actually dislodged the football. You want to talk about a makeup play that was an excellent job by the senior out of Tyler Texas to Karen Cuba. Yes. I'll, tell, I'll tell you what when it rains it pours and it's raining right now in San Diego. Well Rocky Long. 
sitting and waiting on this one, which should be and will be TCU football. His crew has forced 12 turnovers in the four games coming in, and they have done a great job of holding on to the ball offensively. Fifth in the nation, plus 1.75 turnover margin. But this one is going to dip into that margin a little bit and give it to the other guys if all goes as the replay looks. So holding on to that football, and you've got a touchdown. Of course, down at the other end in the first quarter, it was a mishap. The holder, Stahovich, couldn't handle a good snap and a missed opportunity for a field goal. So really, we could be sitting at a 10-10 tie in a very big football game, Aaron, for Rocky Long's troops here at 3-1. and one. Yeah, we spoke with offensive coordinator Andy Lugwood, as you remember yesterday, he said, hey, ball security is of utmost importance, and there's a lot of ways that we can do that, but when you look at their last game against Michigan and they have those three turnovers that they gave up, that really prevented them from having any real chance to be able to get anything going offensively. Their defense has done a good job of being able to get the ball back, but you just can't turn After it over. Review, the ruling on the field stands as called. First down. And it was recovered in the end zone, so a touchback to boot. So it'll be a TCU drive that starts now at the 20. And there you see the mishaps. First the botched field goal attempt, and then the sophomore Ronnie Hillman coughing it up right in the end zone. To the ground, here's Ed Wesley. And he turns forward for about five. Well, James, let's take a look at some of the miscues that San Diego State has had. Their first drives were two, three, and outs because there were dropped balls, muffed snaps down inside the red zone, and then finally Ronnie Hillman coughing it up on the two-yard line after some big plays and momentum. And coming into last week's game, or excuse me, a couple weeks ago against Michigan, Ronnie Hillman had carried the ball 358 times without coughing it up, and he had two in that game and one tonight. Here's Wesley, he's got guys in black diving many feet away and don't get a piece of the senior tight end. Yeah, they like to be able to get Ed Wesley out on the outside edge. Last week, as you mentioned, was his first time back and led the team after coming back from the injury with 11 carries, 93 yards. It's almost nine yards a carry. Nice way to get yourself back in the game. Wow. Matthew Tucker he brings off 6'1", 218, right down on Bear Hay. And that shows you right there. When you go from James to Tucker to Wesley, coaches tell you they don't skip a beat with the backs. I tell you what, this gets your players up front pretty fired up when you just drop your head. Matt Bear Hay took the brunt of that. Be interesting to see as this game wears on. And a lot of games that I've played in, when safeties take hits like that towards the end of the ball game, they start whiffing because they're dropping their head and don't want to get run over. And there's a pop from the defense. Otelli in there, Jake Feely as well as Tucker takes it again. So far tonight, both of these teams have made a concerted effort to be able to rush the football, and they're having about equal success. The difference in this ball game so far has been the miscues by San Diego State. They need to be able to cut that 3-3-5 loose, create some havoc on that offensive side of the line of scrimmage, and come up with some turnovers to get something generated. A little confusion right now. Third and three here, Aaron, and they go to Tucker. Tucker stopped behind the line of scrimmage, but powers forward for a big first down for TCU. Tenhoff had him stop. James, that's really been the story of tonight. Again, that defense doing a good job of getting over on the other side of the line of scrimmage, but a missed tackle that time. Right there, Miles Burris was in position, and you can see he puts his hands up on his head. He's frustrated. He knew that that was a chance to be able to get themselves off the field, but Matthew Tucker with a great second and third effort gets the first down. Here's play action pass with James in there, firing to Boyce. Josh Boyce has another first down for TCU. That time, Josh Boyce going one-on-one -on -one with Larry Parker. 
Boyce is the leading receiver on this team and on pace to be the only the second wide receiver in After TCU the history. Over, personal foul with a late hit, number 26 of the defense. The penalty would be 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. Oh, and what a shame. That's Marcus Andrews, the sophomore from Los Angeles Crenshaw High School in his first start here tonight. And he is down and well, a good call. And that ball pops out. But you just simply can't do that. You love the effort to be able to come over and you have to start to wonder if the San Diego State defense is starting to get frustrated a little bit. TCU at the 22. That's Wayman James. Will stay in the block on the play. Oh, There's another flag down on the Aztec sideline. Great job in anticipation that time by Leon McFadden to break on the ball. We talked about teams were thrown away from this young man, and we now know why. Did an excellent job of anticipating that, and jumping the route, and coming up with the interception. A huge play for the Aztec defense. McFadden 23 yards on the return after the play personal foul unnecessary roughness number 55 of the offense 15 yards will be added to the end of the run first down and that's the big senior guard Kyle Dooley helping out the Aztec cause McFadden has played some offense a few carries they need a spark they got one from number two right back to Qualcomm after this So just the third interception here this season for Casey Paul Hall. Here's another look at it. And a poorly thrown ball as he was trying to get it to Jonathan Jones. Yeah, McFadden did a good job of just squatting on the route. Jonathan Jones stopped his route, and I think Paul Hall thought he was going to continue on, and they just weren't on the same page on that one. The result was an interception. The handoff to Hillman. He'll take it up for three across the 45. And Rocky Long squad right now, AT has got to do something with it after the two miscues when they were down deep in TCU territory. No question. And I'm surprised San Diego State didn't take a shot over the top on a sudden change when you're down by 10 points at home and off to a sluggish start. You need something to spark your offense. San Diego State has to be able to take that turnover. Huge. It took points off the board for TCU. They've got to convert some. Something here offensively. High backs, and here's the toss sweep. Leading the way is Young and running out of real estate, Ronnie Hillman. So he gets a couple more. Tank Carter, the All American linebacker, drops in, and it'll bring up a third down and long now. There's a look at tonight's Macy's play selection for San Diego State. 15. Tries on the ground for 72 yards. And what do they need in a big way? Five right here. Walter Casey comes in to spell Hillman. The blitz is picked up and a pick thrown the other way. Johnny Fobbs, the safety. The senior from Fort Worth puts it right back in the hands of the TCU Horn Frog. So unable to do anything with the big pick by McFadden, Lindley, and the Aztecs. Gary Patterson's safeties always do such a good job in the run game. Here they step up big against this Ryan Lindley passing attack. TCU ball when we come back. Rocky Long just saw his crew come up with a big pick, only to give it right back to TCU. Johnny Fobbs intercepting a Lindley pass, and from midfield, here comes TCU. It's Ed Wesley bouncing outside. Let's go back to that interception. Third tur turnover of the night for Lindley and Johnny, the Aztecs. Johnny Fobbs is back here, a little miscommunication. 
by Ryan Lindley and Denso. Denso runs a corner route, but Fobbs is all over that. It's almost as if Lindley thought that Denso was going to run a post pattern instead of a corner route, but that seemed to be covered anyway because of the positioning of Johnny Fobbs. I think that was just a miscommunication and a poorly thrown ball on behalf of the Aztecs. Nice hole there for Ed Wesley. He needed one and got a whole lot more. So the chains will move. TCU trying to add to a 10 point lead, a 39 yard strike for the sophomore quarterback Casey Pahal to Antoine Hicks, the only touchdown of the game for Gary Patterson and his Horn Frogs. GP with the same look he had on when TCU won the Rose Bowl last year over Wisconsin. He's got the khaki pants. He said he came out in the Johnny Cash all black look and his players said no coach. He told us not to act different. And that's the same old look and it's been working for the head sheriff there in TCU. Seems like this TCU offense is making a concerted effort to be able to run towards the football and run right at this Aztec defense. This year there's been a couple times that TCU's offense has been the one that's maybe started off slow with the Horn Frogs in general as a team. But tonight it's been the Aztecs with miscue after miscue shooting themselves in the foot. This could be a much different ball game if they catch the ball and protect it. Especially down in the red zone. They need another big play by their defense badly. They've got the bigs in drop. The tight end blocks, and here's a nice stop by Miles Burris and Jerome Long and the rest of the guys wearing the black jerseys for the Aztecs. So TCU moving the ball right now, and 58 yards on their drive with the mistake, and it's 150 combined when you look at the muffed field goal try the turnover by Ronnie Hillman coughed it up fumbling into the end zone and then of course the interception thrown by Ryan Lindley well, what's significant about that graphic is 150 yards is exactly how many San Diego State has tonight third down pressure on Paul Hall and he lays it right out there for Josh Boyce Casey Paul Hall slow to get up and he has shown so much toughness this year. Takes a great big shot, but 31 yards, the strike to the big sophomore, Josh Boyce. Wow, what a play. Tremendous poise by Paul Hall to sit inside the pocket. San Diego State brought the house that time, trying to affect the quarterback, and they certainly did. But Paul Hall showed some resilience and a nice touch pass to Boyce for another touchdown. And the season opener against Baylor in the loss. Hey, Adam Zucker here in New York. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report, Misery Loves Company, Ohio State the guest for Nebraska's first Big Ten home game. Denard Robinson gets into some early trouble against Northwestern, but then it was time to tighten the laces. And we'll hear from noted alum Bob Schieffer of CBS News on TCU's potential move to the Big 12. But now, back to the Horned Frogs and Aztecs in San Diego with James Bates, Aaron Taylor, and Casey Pahal. <laughs> you got that right. Brooke Collins is down there with Casey Paul as well. We'll have to check and make sure he's all right, the sophomore quarterback, Adam. And they mentioned Denard Robinson, of course, San Diego State, their only loss of the season to Michigan. Their old coach, Brady Hoke, and Denard Robinson with his big day. And 17 to nothing, TCU on top here early. Fake the handoff, reverse, and it's Colin Lockett who's pop. James, let's go back and take a look at this touchdown, bringing pressure off the edge. Keep your eye on number 42, Jake Feely. Just tattoos Paul Hall, who stands in there tall while Boyce gets inside of Gabe Lemon. When you talk about toughness at the quarterback position, I played with a guy who was number four up in northeastern Wisconsin, who was also a pretty tough quarterback, and Brett Favre, and Paul Hall certainly took a shot there with great touch on that last pass. Aaron Taylor won a Super Bowl with number four Brett Favre and actually lost the Super Bowl here against the Denver Broncos, Super Bowl 32. Why well, you got to bring that up? 
I gave you both, good and bad. It can't all be good, AC. <laughs> hey, let me ask you this, though. Had it been Andy Dalton that got hit by Feely, would you have said that he was tattooed? No, because he was 14, and it's just different. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Dalton, of course, 42 and 7 as a starter for TCU. What an outstanding career he left. Certainly with this team on top, number two in the nation when the dust settled last year, and now doing a great job as a rookie with Cincinnati. Here's Hillman, another big drive for San Diego State as we go five and a half left in the first half. Tank Carter, who has seemed to settle down here a little bit in this game on the stop. Both of these offenses have been similar tonight, very balanced, running the football, and throwing the football in terms of play selection, but the significant difference has been TCU's ability to strike vertically down the field. San Diego State has been unable to do that, and when you combine that with drops and turnovers, it's a big reason why you're down 17 to nothing at home when you could very easily be in this game. They've got to get something going on this drive. The blitz for TCU picked up nicely. Lofts up there for Denzo. Denzo dives out, but he can't pull it in. On the coverage was Devin Johnson. On the coverage. That ball was slightly overthrown. Dylan Denso again, his favorite target, is on a simple corner route. It's tough looking over your back shoulder and having to turn your head midstream, and you see the frustration on Denso right there. San Diego State, no question, has had their opportunities. They just haven't been able to cancel, capitalize on it. Here's Stahovic, punts it away to the junior Sky Dawson, 60-meter champion in the Mountain West Conference, and he's dropped again as soon as he catches it. Same guilty party. Eric Pinkins down there in a hurry to lay one on him. Do you get the feeling that Sky Dawson really wants to return a punt? <laughs> yes. He wants to show off those wheels, doesn't he? <laughs> I don't know if he has a fair catch in him. Great coverage that time by Pinkins and San Diego State. Hey, and what does that show you for a track guy? Well, let's face it, I mean, he's a track guy out there playing football who really struggled against SMU. He dropped a few, so that does show some guts for the junior receiver and punt return man. Remember? Another try here for TCU. And Wesley up near the first down marker, just a bit shy. Let's take a look at tonight's Scion. First half, key players in this ball game. We talk about Casey Ball Hall has been very accurate tonight, completing 70% of his balls. Had a couple touchdowns, been throwing the ball very well. Of course, had that interception, and then Ronnie Hillman both on the ground and through the air has been the primary and only playmaker. And if it weren't for that turnover on the two yard line going in, which what could have been a touchdown, he would be having a pretty good night. And Hillman will pick up the first down. So they go to the ground, Casey Pawhall, who came in 13 touchdowns to only two interceptions, has thrown two TDs and one pick here tonight. He's a very accurate passer, does a good job of locating the football in his receiver's hands so they can run after the catch. These haven't been big bombs down the field. Every single one of his passes tonight has enabled the receiver to be able to run and make yards after the catch, including the touchdowns. Ducker in the block for Paul Hall. Throws one right across the middle, and oh, that one trouble. Corey Fuller, the intended target. Bear Hay almost pulled it in for an interception. Paul Hall was getting a little greedy on that. Corey Fuller was on a skinny post. It was a lot of red and black jerseys around that football. It was actually Marcus Andrews who got the first hand on it. Good break on the ball. So clock will stop with 338 remaining before halftime. There's Andrews who got his first start tonight, the sophomore. And it's a second down and 10 now for this TCU offense. In motion is Luke Shivers. He'll come back to block, leading the way. As the pads pop for his running back, Matthew Tucker. Brooke Collins, what's going on down there? Well, James, you saw Paul Halls come off earlier at that touchdown pass. He actually got a laceration on his left arm. They said they had a really tough time t actually getting the bleeding to stop. They finally did. They wrapped it back up, and obviously he's back on the field. He is one tough guy. Well, it's a good thing it wasn't the right arm, Brooke. It would have ruined that artwork. 
Here's the sweep on a third down, and a great job by Wayman James. Another missed tackle for the Aztecs, and it'll be a first down, TCU. James, remember last night in our meetings with offensive coordinator Justin Fuente, they said that they wanted to be able to take their chances outside, be able to get the edges on the San Diego State defense, but again, missed tackles. That time by number 37, Vanessa Harris. What allowed Tucker to be able to get to the outside? Excuse me, James to be able to get to the outside. James doing the working up in front of him. Jonathan Jones, you saw, and Antoine Hicks, the two receivers. Outstanding job blocking. It's a short game here, AT, but you, you really get a sense that TCU, the big guys up front, are in a little bit of a groove and running behind them. These backs are having a good time now. Yeah, there's no question. Offense, James, as you know, is about rhythm, and TCU, a run based offense, is starting to get into that rhythm. Ironically, San Diego State's defense has been pretty stout against the pass. It was the run that they were struggling against, and TCU's been able to exploit the strength of this Aztec defense tonight. Again to the ground, and again, Wayman James, Jerome Long, the senior, nose tackle on the stop. This is a point in the ball game right before the half ends where you're driving offensively. You don't want to press. You don't want to turn the ball over and give any unnecessary life to San Diego State. But this is a big third down, third and four for TCU to convert. He's done a pretty good job tonight on third down, four for five so far. Four-man rush for the Aztecs, going way up top and pulling it in. A great job by Boyce. By John Boyce. And Paw Hall finds his big receiver. Chains will move here with 139 remaining in the first half. Reminds you tonight's primetime football game between TCU and San Diego State and is brought to you by Discover Car. San Diego State has Game really struggled. Due to blood on number 71. So 71 is the number they call out there for Michael Thompson. Redshirt freshman's played some left tackle. He's also the backup center. Officials tonight trying to keep players safe. And when you got a big laceration, you got to leave the game. Here's the speed option, and they get it out to the edge. A good job. <laughs> That's one thing that the Aztecs know how to defend. They've seen a lot of triple option. In their last seven games, you go back to last season, they have faced a triple option team four times. Cal Poly this year, Time a big out. win. TCU, this is their first of the first half. At Army, of course, and then Poinsettia Bowl champions last year first bowl win since 1969 over navy discover car bringing you tonight's game between tcu and san diego state back here in san diego at qualcomm stadium san diego state trying to stop the bleeding 17 points scored by tcu a few missed opportunities for the guys in all black tonight TCU will receive in the second half, so pressure definitely on this Rocky Long defense here, trying to get a big stop. The back is Tucker, Matthew Tucker hard charging. Looks to be a first down for TCU inside the 20. Really seems like the inside of that 3-3-5 defense has been very vulnerable tonight. They'd like to be able to bring pressure off the edges, and when you can run up inside, it creates a potential for big plays because the bulk of the defense isn't there. That middle of the defense for the Aztecs has been open. Oh, no. Interception in the end zone. That time it's the other corner, Larry Parker. That is an excellent job, James, of getting yourself off the field and coming up defensively again in the red zone for the Aztecs. In the last two games coming into tonight, Larry Parker has had four interceptions. He's really benefited, as we said, by teams thrown away from Leon McFadden. Paul Hall, who's been great protecting the football so far this year, knows he made a mistake there. They don't get any points out of it. San Diego State has an opportunity here with 59 seconds left. They've got a decision to make. Do they try and stretch the field or regroup at halftime and get into that locker room? 
Second interception of the night thrown by Paul Hall. Stopped and going the wrong way here. Ronnie Hillman, who is sitting on six straight 100-yard rushing games coming into tonight, was held to just 54 in Fort Worth last year towards the end of the season. TCU with just two timeouts left. If I don't know if I would go into halftime with those timeouts. Maybe you call them and see if you get a the ball back and a couple quick plays for a strike if you're the Horn Frogs. If nothing else, force them to punt. And some of the special teams miscues. Choose not to, though. And again, bouncing around, but bouncing around. Behind the line of scrimmage, Ronnie Hillman. Nice crowd here at Qualcomm tonight, but they don't like what they're seeing here to end, to end the first half. But DCU was looking to go up 24 to nothing. Instead, it was a big interception Time in the end zone. TCU, this is their second of the half. Could we please set the game clock at 14 seconds? This will be timeout will be for 30 seconds. So here, Gary Patterson does use that timeout. 14 seconds is the call to be set there on the clock, so they will have a chance at making San Diego State punt here. Let's take a look now at the Mountain West today. Brought to you by Conoco. Well, we watched part of that Boise State game last night, and that offense and Keller Moore just absolutely explosive. And my Irish, the Notre Dame alum, finally showing up and dropped 59 points on Air Force, and Nevada getting blanked. Excuse me, blank in UNLV. Been a rough day so far in the Mountain West. Some of the teams. Now we'll go see the Air Force Falcons host the San Diego State Aztecs on Thursday this night. This is the final timeout of the first half for TCU. 30 seconds. See, James, that's what I'm saying. If TCU had a called that after their first down play, there'd be a lot, le a lot more time left on the clock, and maybe TCU could have capitalized on it with a big return and maybe finally Sky Dawson, who's committed to not making a fair catch, could make something happen and get them either in the end zone or back in field goal position. Here's Greg Burks, the backup linebacker who's blocked two punts in his career as a horn frog great special teams play every year a lot of competition on the special teams for gary patterson's unit so nine seconds to go stahovich does get it off end over end and sky dawson chooses not to step up and deal with this one and the first half clock will run out and gary patterson Boy, has he been on not only Sky Dawson, but Brandon Carter as well returning those punts. Usually he does choose to meet with the team right there on the field before going into the locker room. That time the team huddles up, but he just talks to Sky Dawson. <laughs> and Brooke Collins will try to catch the head man. And here is Brooke Collins with Gary Patterson. Gary? Are you okay? Yeah. All right. Casey Vaz, uh, two interceptions, very rare for him. What do you say to him at halftime? Well, no, we wanted a field goal. Mm -hmm. It's not very smart. We still got a whole half left that we needed an either field goal or a touchdown. Got to play to win. Every time San Diego State got some momentum, though, your D, huge plays. You must be pleased with them so far. Well, yeah, you know, we've been working towards this. We haven't, haven't played the way we needed to, and uh, they're starting to take a lot more confidence. We got another half to play, and we got to, we got to get after them. We got to keep them to one less point. Thanks, Coach. Uh, Coach Gary Patterson liking what he's seeing out of the defense. A goose egg they're putting up on the board. The number one defense in the country for the last three years. Struggling a little bit early in this season. 17 to nothing. After the break, we'll send you to New York for the Verizon Halftime Report. You're watching Primetime Football presented by Discover Card exclusively on CBS Sports Network. Football first. Fourth quarter, airborne popped. Wow, up goes 
Walter Casey and DJ Yendry caught him airborne and dropped him on his back. I've never been a big fan of running backs going airborne for this very reason. Casey is a very good downhill runner, but that's just a poor choice. When you're down there in the red zone, you got to drop that head. And Casey's a very much an inside tackle runner. You got to put that head down and will your way into the end zone. Stop getting cute down here the, on the goal line. Junior stays in, Walter Casey. He'll get it again. This time he does put his head down, but about the same result, Elijah Olavo, the safety there to lead the charge. Great job by TCU on back-to-back -back plays are coming up stout. San Diego State had a lot of momentum. They just run a simple power, but a lot of pressure there off the edge, particularly Elijah Olavo doing a good job. And number 33. Chris Gardner from that middle linebacker position coming there also. Huge, huge, huge third down for San Diego State, but they got to protect the football. Can't afford a turnover here. And to the air, Lindley stumbling across the goal line. Touchdown, Chad Young. Andy Ludwig promised him some carries. How about your first career touchdown on a reception? Coaches really gave a lot of praise to Young, saying he's a human battering ram, and you could tell that offensive coordinator Andy Lugwood really did want to be able to get him the ball. Because they haven't thrown the ball much, I wonder if that was a tendency breaker for TCU, as they didn't even bother covering him on that last play. And remember, even more important was the play on special teams that popped the ball out of the grip of Sky Dawson last time down. The Aztecs are back in this football game. Chad Young's first career reception, first career touchdown has him jumping around here at the queue on homecoming night. TCU scoring the first 17 points of this football game. And the senior, Ryan Lindley, and the Aztecs have come charging back behind some big stops of their defense. Abel Perez has been outstanding kicking the ball into the end zone here tonight and not giving two dangerous return guys for TCU. A chance to do damage. TCU, the only team in the nation with two different guys to return kicks for touchdowns. They'll have a chance here. It's Greg McCoy who has one of those touchdowns. Nothing there for him, though, as Vanessa Harris, who's had a big night, gets down there for the stop. James has been a tale of two halves for the Aztecs. A lot of miscues in the first half, but the second half, they've been on point, first of all, the man we just saw, Chad Young, forcing the turnover on Sky Dawson, set up their first touchdown of the night. Ryan Lindley, who's been off a little bit tonight, two great, perfectly thrown footballs to get themselves right back in this ball game. And noticeably absent for those touchdowns was Ronnie Hillman. Keeping this one is Casey Paul Hall. Now, you mentioned earlier, Aaron, you put on a tape and you watch Andy Dalton run the football last year and Paul Hall, and you think maybe Andy Dalton is faster, and that is far from the case. Dalton just had a knack, and they are a little bit disappointed with the way the sophomore has run the football early this season. They've been a little bit disappointed with the way he's been tentative, and that's not uncommon. He's taken a lot of shots, and for a young quarterback getting his first start, he's had a tremendous first year, but that's certainly an area of his game he can improve. Does a great job there standing and taking the shot and getting the pass off to Antoine Hicks. Seventh catch of the night for the senior picks. Let's get it down to Brooke Collins. Well, guys, you're just talking about it. Andy Dalton, of course, left quite a legacy at TCU, setting just about every offensive record they had. Casey, yeah, not the leader, is now the leader of this team. Looking at them, the two really couldn't be more different. Dalton, of course, very clean cut, was engaged in college, now married. Really the good Christian boy you would want your daughter to bring home. And Casey, really, he's a great guy, too, but more of a renegade. He's got the long hair flowing out the helmet, a whole arm of tattoos, just more of an edge to him. But even though these two are so different, his teammates have jumped on board with Casey. That's for sure. Well, the renegade just went down, Brooke. Miles Burris led the conference in sacks 
Sparks last year and has a huge one here against TCU. James, we talked about in the open when we were going through the lineups that Miles Burris is an excellent off the edge rusher. They will bring him inside, but he excels off the edge. That time he's unblocked. And all the missed tackles that they had early in the ball game, Burris comes up huge and gets Paul Hall to the ground, forcing the punt. The momentum has absolutely shifted in this stadium. It's all about the Aztecs. We're looking to get a huge punt by Anson Kelton. Big boomer by the big man. Anson Kelton does a great job of getting a little bit of momentum back. 56 yards on the punt. A big sack by the best blitzer on this defense, according to Rocky Long, Miles Burris. Tonight's game presented by Discover Card. We welcome you back to San Diego, and let's give you a little Sprint Unlimited perspective coming right at you into your living rooms here on CBS Sports Network tonight. Some high-flying fun in the second half, and there he is, Inspector Gadget with those gadget arms. <laughs> <laughs> Along with Aaron Taylor and Brooke Collins, I am James Bates. Glad to have you with us on Montezuma Mesa here in Southern California tonight. TCU, all the talk all week long. Off to the Big 12, nothing official. But let's put the pieces of the puzzle together and send them there. They were on their way, of course, to the Big East at season's end. This their last year in the Mountain West Conference, regardless. But now they're staying closer to home. The Kansas boy, Gary Patterson, trying to call up a defensive play to get a stop here now. Second down and 10. And a big drop there on Hillman. That was just a slip that time. Remember that last drive where San Diego State, the last couple times that they've had some success, Ronnie Hillman was not in there. Gets back into the game, slips, not even being touched. Now they have both Hillman and Casey in the game. My guess is they'll use one of these guys as a receiver on a third and 13. Big third and 13 here for a TCU defense. It was great on third down in the first half. Gardner and Carter are the linebackers. They'll drop. And now forced to cover. Coming out of the backfield, KZ. Walter KZ has a reception and a first down on third down and 12. Well, we talked about them wanting to be able to use a running back as receivers. That was just a wheel route out of the backfield. Nobody followed him out there. Great play call and execution. He's to the left of your screen. Stays like he's going to handle protection in there. Good job by that offensive line holding up long enough for Lindley to be able to get the ball in stride. And Casey coming up with another big play for this Aztec offense in the second half and has clearly outshined the star, Ronnie Hillman. Hillman will give the junior a breather now. Here's the sophomore coming into tonight. Second in the nation in rushing behind LaMichael James. Oh, and intercepted. Verrett with the pickoff. Jason Verrett. Does a great job. Not even sure if they'd start him tonight. Injured against SMU. And he picks off the Ryan Lindley pass. Verrett, to play the way he's had to play, you have to have a short-term memory. Remember, we saw earlier in the game, Lindley throw a ball like that to Escobar out in the flat. And it was Greg McCoy that almost came up with the interception. We talked about whether or not it was a good pass with touch or, or, or just being lucky. Well, I think Lindley's luck ran out on that last one. Only one interception so far, but he's had three tonight, not making good decisions. And after a big stand by the Aztec defense, here comes Matthew Tucker, Jerome Long into double digits now. The nose tackle, big number 94. Been really impressed with him. I had a chance to meet him at the Mountain West Conference media days in Las Vegas at the end of July and just a well-spoken tough young kid and the heart and soul typical Rocky Long type player. Here's the speed option and the keeper for Paul Hall. Paul Hall is pushed out of bounds. It's a first down though. And close to being out of bounds. Yeah, that's uh, Casey Paul Hall doing a good job of being able to run the football. On the zone read here. It's interesting. I've seen this play a couple different times. He's moving before the football snap, and I think that allows him to be able to get to the outside in just a half step to be able to catch the edge of that defense. Very effective 
coaching technique and coaching point on that play. There's Matthew Tucker. 18 the, the past few years. Last year, Wesley ha had a great year, but you look at Tucker, Tucker, you look at Wesley, you look at James, and, and for a while it was just TCU's running backs were kind of were just guys. Now they've got three very good options to carry that football, and Tucker looks great running tonight. Yes, he does, and it's a three-headed monster. They just go ahead and call whoever's numbers in there. They don't even think about who's going to be in there and, and, and change in plays. They have a lot of trust in these guys, not only running the football, but in pass protection as well. A chance to go up top now on a second and short. They hand it off to Wayman James, and the sophomore will have a first down inside the 25. One more tackle for Jerome Long. The good news about those three running backs that they have is that in all likelihood, they'll all be back next year. Tucker's a junior, James is a sophomore, and Wesley's a junior as well. And so far tonight, we talked about TCU's offense being run-based. Well, they're getting it done on the ground for sure tonight. You can keep on going with that youth movement, but Gary Patterson says, do it now. That's the theme, and lucky that this one didn't get off because it was a disaster from the get-go. That was left tackle Five Jess Olson. False start. Number 62, the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Four new starters on this offensive line coming from last year. Got to hold your water there, big guy. It's very hard sometimes to be able to sit there. And the San Diego State crowd enjoying a little bit of a home field advantage. This crowd starting to come back awake. Hoping to help this defense. Very advantageous first and 15 position to start this possession. It's Wesley leading the way for Tucker. They're on first down in a nice pickup. And that was Matt Brown, the redshirt freshman for Allen, Texas, in there taking that snap and handing it off to Tucker. So one and done as Paul Hall comes back in. We're talking with Justin Fuente, the offensive coordinator. They said that they wanted to be able to get Matt Brown a couple of snaps. True freshman from, redshirt freshman rather, from Allen, Texas, was recruited by Arizona, Nebraska, K-State. Get his feet wet a little bit. Here's Paul Hall with a handoff. A lot of room for Wesley. Ed Wesley will take the Frogs down to the five-yard line. First and goal, TCU. Tell you what, TCU's done an excellent job of gashing San Diego State up inside the middle. Look at these big run lanes here. When you can get a hat on a hat and pick up all that trash and that movement, it gives a running back a clear lane and a lot of choices on where to be able to run. And that's one of the weaknesses of this 3-3-5 and movement is that you can take yourself out of the play, and that's what happened. Power eye and a hand off to Shivers. Shivers knows how to get to the paint, although he stopped short here. 11 touchdowns on 23, now 24 career touches. 11 touchdowns <laughs> on 24 touches for the senior Shivers. That's almost a 50% touchdown ratio that he has. And every time we talk to his coaching staff, they always laugh and joke and say, yeah, we don't know why we give him the ball more. Every time we do, he seems to score a touchdown. The converted linebacker, Luke Shivers. The red zone go-to guy will stay in. He's the fullback. Tailback is Wesley, stopped at the line of scrimmage. There's Jerome Long one more time. Bear Hay got back there. Tell you what, Jerome Long right here in the middle doing a good job getting penetration and disengaging his blocker. Does a good job of throwing 64 of the center, James Fry, on the ground. As a nose tackle, that's what you have to do. J.J. Autelli does a great job as well penetrating. And there you see the dozen for the senior, Jerome Long. And Gary Patterson wants a timeout here with 526 TCU. This is their first of the left second half. in the ball game. Big play coming up when we come back to Qualcomm Stadium here in San Diego.
TCU on top here in San Diego over the Aztecs by a score of 20 to 14. Only three second half points, a halftime score of 17 to nothing for the Horned Frogs. And the red zone defense for Rocky Long's crew has not been good up to this point. They need a great big play against the Frogs on third down now. There's Tucker, Matthew Tucker, just about untouched, easily into the end zone, and a big touchdown for TCU. James Fry, the center up top, punching him through. Just a great job that time by TCU's offensive line. James Fry, we mentioned his name, getting thrown to the ground on a couple plays earlier by Jerome Long, comes up big that time. And that's what good players do, they respond. TCU doing a great job punching it in, taking control up front. Why not go for two here? That's 526. They'll take it though. We'll be right back to San Diego. Aztecs got a score two. Anyway, 27-14, our score. A 27 to 14 ball game here in San Diego presented by Discover Card. It's TCU in San Diego State. Ross Evans has just tied Dontrell Moore's 356 career points and sits along with the former New Mexico running back atop the all time list of Mountain West Conference players. And of course, a chance many chances to break it a chance perhaps to come back and score twice and get into this ball game san diego state with 519 remaining now they've had a good second half after being held scoreless in the first well look at the ap poll the top 10 brought to you by dodge journey tell you what lsu looks absolutely phenomenal today against a florida team that was missing their starting quarter or quarterback rather a team to keep an eye on is Stanford not a lot of people have seen them play there was questions about whether or not they were going to take a step back with Harbaugh leaving but they are just as physical as they were last year Taj Boyd the Clemson star quarterback going down with a hip injury so all eyes there on Death Valley in Clemson South Carolina and LSU you're right Another Death Valley was rocking today. 41 points against the Florida Gators and the Honey Badger, a sophomore. <laughs> Teron Matthew, wow, is he ever fun to watch. A big, big playmaker. Honey Badger don't care. He just takes it, doesn't he? <laughs> so can Lindley take charge here late in the game? There's Escobar, who broke the scoring drought earlier in the second half with a nice reception to move the chains. And the Aztecs are going to have to have a little bit of pep in their step, and they look good getting back up to the line of scrimmage quickly. Goes right back out, this time to lock it. Lock it will get out of bounds. Let's, let's just finish up going to break and, and Gary Patterson and TCU going for one rather than two there's you miss it you're in the same situation right yeah no question the charts say in that situation that you have to go by two theoretically San Diego State can score two touchdowns and be ahead in this ball game merely kicking PATs you want to at least give yourself a chance Rocket must not have gotten out of bounds clock continues to run trouble and almost interception number two, Chris Gardner, making just his second start, doing a great job filling in for Kenny Kane. And remember, there was another questionable situation at the end of the first half talking about TCU, which is clearly a well-coached team, but not calling timeouts early enough to be able to get themselves the ball back. You heard Gary Patterson talking about it going in at halftime, and Lindley almost throwing another interception, very reminiscent of last year and some of the decision makings. He can't afford to press here on a huge third down. So they go to the ground and another slip ball is out. Was he down, slipping in the backfield? Was Walter Casey. We've seen Hillman slip a couple times tonight. There has been rain all week. No rain the last 48 hours. And Gary Patterson will step out there to check this one out. 
It looked to me like he slipped and his knee touched as he was going down. Right there, he's down. The ball. If he wasn't the there, he is the second the time around. Knee was down before the ball was fumbled. There will be fourth down. Uh, uh, again, James, it's third and six inches, seven inches. You've got to find a way to be able to get yourself a first down. Casey had a good game, but that's a couple slips tonight we've seen from these running backs for San Diego State bringing up a fourth and one. You've got to get this. Clock nearing four minutes left in the football game. Everybody in a white jersey walked up. And a timeout. This is the first timeout of the second half for San Diego State. Okay, we'll correct that up top at San Diego State with the timeout. They have two remaining, 4.08 left to play, 27 to 14, here on Montezuma Mesa. College football on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Sprint. All football, no limits. Only from Sprint. By Conoco, who reminds you to always use Conoco gasoline because your car knows. And by Dodge Journey, the search engine for the real world. Oh, what a city. America's finest, they say. America's finest city, San Diego, California. Home to Qualcomm Stadium in the San Diego State Aztecs. First year head coach Rocky Long looking at a big fourth down and short for his squad who has come charging back here in the second half. Running out of time though and a big play do or die right here. I don't think he got it in the team. No he didn't. Chris Gardner what a great job. His uncle is his linebacker coach. Tony Tatamy, and he steps up with a big pop here on fourth and short. No question, great job getting penetration up front. Gardner does a good job of filling his gap. When you can play defense on the other side of the line of scrimmage, you're doing good. If you're Casey, you got to find a way to know where that first down is, get your head across the ball. But what's interesting to me about that last play, James, is that that was Walter Casey, the backup, and not Ronnie Hillman who's been so effective for San Diego State in just two years. Good to see the seniors stepping in and making plays. Arlington Martin, where he went to high school. Derek Gilden, also from Arlington Martin, another guy with a bright future, just a freshman. And remember, two linebackers, and probably the two best linebackers, and that includes Tank Carter being out there, are not playing tonight. They lost Tanner Brock. He was out with a, a foot injury, so he probably will get a medical redshirt and have two more years to play. Had not been redshirted, but he'd been such a big part. And Kenny Kane injured his leg. Those two guys coming out of fall camp were making as many plays as Carter as anybody there in the linebacking court. Well, while we have a chance, how about tonight's Napa play of the game? First down, technically TCU territory beyond midfield of their 49. Lindley back, throw, intercepted by Verrett on the near side. 35, return 40, and to midfield. Tackle there by the fullback, Chad Young. Got too greedy. And that was Ted Leitner on the Aztec Radio Network, KOGO. He's been around here for quite some time, five decades. Leitner's been calling Aztec football and basketball on and off, and it's, it's always good to see Ted. You, you come here to a San Diego State game, and you, you know you, Mike May takes care of you, and you know you're going to get a nice, nice conversation, a big handshake from Ted Leitner. So thank you for our Napa play of the game, Mr. Leitner. He's been here since it was Jack Murphy Stadium. Time out, San Diego State. Their second of the second half. This timeout will be for 30 seconds. Well, here's this week's Conoco Mountain West Athlete of the Week. And putting up big numbers last night. I'm going to guess who? Kellen Moore. 
43 and two as a starter. 46, the magic number. He will pass Colt McCoy, and if he keeps on winning, he'll do it with this crew in UN at UNLV in a couple weeks. Three touchdown passes and zero interceptions in the win, a big one on the road over Pat Hills, Fresno State Bulldogs. We saw him a couple weeks ago, and he's just surgical in the way that he's able to distribute the football. Here's Anson Kelton, and does another good job of dropping it in there and giving his guys a chance, but they can't get down there. Looked like one of them slipped up and injured, perhaps. That's Travaris Battle, who has been a special teams phenom. Again, having trouble getting off, and his guys are going to help him. Mm. Yeah, he's running, just came up limping and gippy. Gary Patterson saying that he thought he had a tired team, that it was a really hot summer this year, and we saw guys cramping up against Baylor, and really he's looking forward to getting his guys some rest. It feels like their legs were tired. They battled back, and they started to come back, but it feels like it's been a hard first five weeks of the season in camp. So Lindley and the Aztecs have to go fast and furious here. Dylan Denzo on the reception. It will be a first down as we near two minutes left in the football game. Dylan Denzo being the featured receiver tonight for San Diego State. Lindley's got to be able to walk his team down the field. Again firing a chance. Ball hung up there forever and turned around to Karen Cuba as he broke it up. Really seems like Lindley's tried to force footballs into tight spots tonight. He hasn't been overly accurate. He's a player that may have a chance to be able to play on the next level. He's a good kid. He's a good leader. He's got all the intangibles. He's got a strong arm. But to play on the next level, you got to be able to make good decisions, control your location of the football. So a second down and 10 now. And pass is incomplete. Well, Gary Patterson, we saw him over there, the, the defensive coordinator for so many years, and, and of course has done such a fine job as a head coach. Together we are, brought to you by Russell Athletic. And here's our quote for this week. It's exciting times. <laughs> he tried to hide it last night. You can read it for yourself as we paraphrase, but finally TCU has gotten to that position. That position, of course, a move to the Big 12, which will happen next week. If you put everything together that these other ADs from these other schools, Texas especially, are saying, TCU is going to accept and going to join the Big 12. And so much of it, it, it's scary how much of it has to do with that gentleman right there from a small town of under 200 in Roselle, Kansas. $160 million stadium going up right now, a number two finish, two BCS appearances, a win over Wisconsin last year. Gary Patterson has made this program proud in the city of Fort Worth. What an amazing job. He's done a tremendous job, and they've done it the right way with good kids and kind of the Hoosiers type story. Nobody really giving TCU a chance when you watch them play, particularly on defense like they did on that last play and like they've done since Gary Patterson got to Fort Worth. It's no mistake. The TCU has earned their way back into the Big 12 with what they've done on the football field and really, James, what they haven't done off of it. Exactly. A story in, in Sports Illustrated not too long ago with the woes, the off-the-field problems of all these schools in college football and the one on the opposite end of the spectrum, Gary Patterson's TCU Horn Frogs. You try to talk to Mark Cohen, the, the sports information director who does such a fine job, and that is one thing. Not only is Gary Patterson superstitious, but that's another one. Hey, we can't talk about that. They, they don't want to jinx it, but you know what? You, you're around these kids. You know, Andy Dalton, shoot, last year. We talk about all the studs that they lost off of that team, AT, but all the leaders, Jeremy Curley, J.J. Young. I mean, just up and down the roster, they lost 23 starters off of that team. Uh, Jimmy Young, uh, Jake Kirkpatrick, Colin Jones, who was just activated by the 49ers. And you kind of get why yeah, there's a lot of money, natural gas and oil running under there, under Fort Worth. 
guys aren't going to really be as willing to donate to this stadium if guys are out there getting in trouble at a little private school. They're taking care of business. And taking care of business still is his big running back, Ed Wesley, who's nearing 2,000 career yards, and the ball came loose. TCU players saying he's down, no official signal yet. Rolling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. First down. That was number nine, Miles Burris again. Great effort and run by Ed Wesley, but nine times out of ten, fumbles occur on second efforts. You've got to be able to protect that football. It was number 20. It came over for San Diego State. Matt Berhey that forced that football. You see it gets away when the ball is low and or away. Looked like it was also 25 in them. Um, on there, stripping that football. Great job by the defense of Rocky Long to come up with another good play at the end. Under a minute to play. Well, coming up next, it's inside college football. Adam Zucker, Brian Jones, and Bruce Feldman. We'll get you all caught up with scores and highlights from around the country. It's inside college football, and it's exclusively on CBS Sports Network. Football first. Good job of flying to the football and game tackling to be able to get this ball back, but it's probably going to be too much or too little too late for the Aztecs. There's a second short and another ball hanging up there forever. Greg McCoy breaking on that one, the senior. We've seen Jason Verrett do a great job, the sophomore tonight, who has been injured. How about Chris Del Conte? Okay, the athletic director there at, at TCU. He was at Rice, a team that was 0-6. Midway through the season, he takes over a 6-0 TCU team <laughs> since he has been on board. Chris Del Conte has been to two BCS games, one the, the Fiesta Bowl, the, the loss to Boise, and of course the win to Wisconsin, and then the College World Series with Jim Schlossnagel's bunch. Oh, what is what is that guy doing? He, he, is, he is a lot of fun and, 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 and it declined the invite to come on camera with us tonight. You know, obviously a lot of stuff going on, but it's just, it was a, a treat to, to talk with him as well. And, and good things are happening right now in Fort Worth. And in AT, good things are happening and have been happening as this uh, Titanic begins to take a big old turn right here in San Diego. It started with Brady Hoke and it's carried right on with Rocky Long. And you don't like to see this, the knee being looked at, the left knee of Ed Wesley. But 2,000 career yards, I'm sure he could deal just fine with a little boo-boo. Good job again by the sophomore right underneath Marcus Russell there, stride for stride. You mentioned it earlier, really, really beaten up by RG3, Robert Griffin, and uh, Baylor on opening night, and since then has bounced right back. You, you, you got to have a short memory as a cornerback, and that's what the sophomore has done. He's, he's really sprung back. There's no question. Coming into tonight's game, TCU was absolutely obliterated through the air. 101st in pass defense, giving up almost 270 yards through the air per game. But I tell you what, what's been a liability with all the youth that they have on their two deep roster on both sides of the football and all that experience that they lost, the good news is those guys are going to get older. And this TCU team that's played so many freshmen, 21 of them, in fact, that are on the depth chart, six true freshmen that have started in the first five games. This TCU team, once they get a little bit of experience, is going to be awfully deep and awfully talented as they head to the Big 12. Well, the theme for this team with their 13-0 run last year was don't back down off of the Tom Petty song. Gary Patterson, of course, a big music fan. And no music, it's just do it now was this year's theme. A very young team, and he doesn't want anybody telling us, hey, sophomores and freshmen, let's do it now. And he also told us, we are who we are because of the Mountain West Conference. And victorious in a Mountain West Conference battle tonight, he is with Brooke Collins. Coach, obviously, you guys had the momentum in the first half. San Diego State took it back from you on that third quarter. Where was the letdown? Well, we fumbled the punt. And then we then we turn the ball over. We get a three and out. We take a sack that we shouldn't take. You know what? You know I've been saying it all year. 
we got to finish ball games. Offensively, we played the first half. We didn't play the second half. This was probably close to his complete game defensively as we played all year. I'm excited that going into an off week, build on some momentum and some confidence. You said you got to finish, and one of the things you've been putting a lot of emphasis on is getting a start quickly, which you did. Probably a key to this win, then. Would you agree? Well, you know, I got to find out. We played our best two football games starting fast on the road. Yeah, no, that's both true. As far where we didn't stay at home, both Air Force and San Diego State. So we need to look at why we're playing better on the road than we're playing at home. You said you have two weeks off after today's game and uh, the few before. What do you really want to focus on? Well, we got to get better, especially in pass coverage. Keep it. You know, you got New Mexico, and then you got a BYU on a Friday night. So you got to get ready for both ball games. Thanks a lot, Coach. You bet. We'll see you. All right, Gary Patterson, maybe, Aaron, it's because of all the rebar there at Amon G. Carter Stadium. They <laughs> tore it down. It is going to look pretty, but not right now. Under construction, 27-14. We'll be right back to San Diego to wrap this thing up after this. So the sophomore quarterback, Casey Paul Hall, brings the TCU Horn Frogs in on their farewell tour 7-0 against San Diego State all time as they win tonight 27 to 14 for Aaron Taylor Brooke Collins and our entire crew I'm James Bates for scores highlights features and more go to cbssports.com we hope you enjoyed our game tonight from Montezuma Mesa because we certainly enjoyed bringing it to you here in America's finest city this has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network you stay classy San Diego thanks for stopping by you stay classy. <laughs> Good night, everybody. We'll see you next time.